Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another Board to Naruto Next Generation discussion on the follow from Board to Chapter 80. And today, we gotta discuss something that just about every Naruto fan has wondered following the release of Board to Chapter 80, which is that now that Sarda has her Mangekyo Sharingan, what will her Sharingan powers be? It's a really good question to ask because, as we've seen with the Mangekyo powers before, they are extremely busted powers for those who have the Mangekyo. And I've broken down in detail every Mangekyo Sharingan power in an older video, but with Sarda, there's particular interest given how strong the enemies are. She's going to need an overpowered ability to use in combat either directly or to be able to assist in combat via a hack's ability. We've seen before how dangerous something like Kamui is in the hands of we've seen before how dangerous something like Kamui is in the hands of someone. Double Mangekyo Kakashi was a problem for Kaguya despite being significantly weaker than her. So once we got the spoilers that Sarada did indeed awaken her Mangekyo, I began working on a video for what I believe her powers will actually be. Just as we've done in the past, I'm going to go back into the well of Asian folklore and religion and mythology because, as I've said numerous times, Naruto's franchise is heavily influenced by it and there are small twists made to the stories in order to fit the Naruto story, but literally every Mangekyo power that we have seen has roots in Shinto, so it's only right that we look there to understand what Sawada's powers might be. There are two stories in Shinto in particular that I believe give us a clue to Sawada's powers, and both of them just happen to have a link to the Shinto deities Amaterasu and Susano, which just happens to be strongly incorporated into the Naruto lore. The first is the Kashinda Hime story, and the second is the Meino Uzume story. Given the circumstances that Sarada finds herself in, both as Sasuke's daughter and what we have going on with Ada and with Kawaki, I believe the answer to a Mangekyo power lies with these stories here. However, I will say with near certainty, I believe we already have one power in particular that that Sardis Mangekyo Sharingan will have. That power is the Matarasu. Narratively, it would continue with what we've seen so far, which is that people from within Sasuke's bloodline appear to have a Matarasu, as both Itachi and Sasuke both had it. Also, given the links to the other Shinto stories we have and how heavily the Mangekyo powers we've seen in the franchise all tie back into a story with the Matarasu, I do believe that this is likely. However, I don't think Sarda will have both eyes wasted on having one a Matarasu and have having the other be able to manipulate. Not like what we saw with Sasuke, but I do believe Amaterasu is a very strong candidate for Sarada's source power. So now that we got that part out of the way, let's back things up and dive into the Kashinda Hime and the Ameno Uzume stories so we can find Sarada's second Mangekyo Sharingan power, which will very likely be very important for Boruto Part 2. Starting with the Kashinda Hime story, in this tale, the storm god Susano gets banished from heaven and encounters a couple who are still standing by a river crying tears of agony and despair over what they feel. The reason for their despair and tears was a monster named Orochi and the couple was required to sacrifice one child each year in order to keep Orochi from going on a rampage and killing everyone. This couple is now on their eighth child to be sacrificed, their final daughter, Kashinda Hime. Susano, upon seeing this daughter, falls in love and wants to marry her, and she agrees on the sole condition of Susano killing Orochi in order to save her parents, which he does in turn by using the Tosca Blade. Now, so far in the franchise, we've already seen parts of this take place. Itachi uses his Susano and Tosca Blade to take down Orochimaru, who is obviously a reference to Orochi. Sarada is the only child of Sasuke and Sakura, which would be the parents in this scenario, albeit they aren't the ones crying, but we do have Sarda crying in the place of the parents, and like the parents, Sarda was in great despair and helplessness as she was crying, sticking only with the manga continuity. So forget everything that you've seen in Naruto Shippuden filler. Sarda would be the eighth person to awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan if we stick only to the things that Masashi Kishimoto has drawn, just as Kashinda Hime is the eighth child of this couple. For a reminder as to who are the seven in manga format who have awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan. We have Indra, Madara, Obito, Itachi, Shisui, Sasuke, and Shin Uchiha. Kakashi obviously doesn't count because that I belong to Obito, and the Shin clones are just that clones. They have the exact same ability. This story is one of despair, but also in doing what it takes to protect a loved one. Kashinda Hime agreed to marry Susano because it would protect her older parents, who likely wouldn't be able to conceive another child that next year, and they would have been killed by Orochi due to Orochi demanding one child be fed to them each year. Her love for her parents led to her making a deal with Susana who ended up killing Orochi because he was in love with Kashina Hime. Sarada felt despair just like the parents did. The desperation of 
Shina Hime to protect the loved one that was seen in the form of Boruto. And her actions were based out of desperation and love, just like Kashina Hime. All around the time that Sardo awakened her Mangekyo due to the despair and the desperation that came from hearing Naruto was dead, having Sasuke, the father who she loves, getting ready to kill Boruto, a boy and comrade who Sarda also loves. There's a chance whatever Mangekyo showing on power that Sarda has, that name might include some variation or play on the name Kashina Hime. However, now that we have a potential name for that power, and at the very least, we have inspiration for the circumstances around her Mangekyo awakening, let's look at the other story, which might give us a glimpse into what this power might be. And this one has a definite clear line that you can draw to Sarda's future Mangekyo power. The Ameno Uzume story is a story about the deity who managed to get Amaterasu to leave the cave that she had hidden herself inside of. Amaterasu is the sun goddess. Sarda happens to have a sun pattern Mangekyo, which is another reason I believe she likely has Amaterasu as one power. Ameno Uzume is also known as the Great Persuader, which is another reason why I looked to this story after we got the leaks, because Sarda was able to persuade Sasuke to go looking for and save Boruto, despite what Sasuke said are strong impulses that, that are telling him to overlook what he feels should be the truth and just take things as the Shinjutsu tells him is reality. Sarda was the one who was able to break through that Shinjutsu to reach Sasuke and possibly persuading someone the same way that Ameno Uzumi has been possibly persuaded people in the past. In the story Ameno Uzumi is best known for when Amaterasu locks herself in a cave, she strips off her clothes and she begins to start dancing and she has a mirror and these beautiful jewels outside the cave in order to lure out Amaterasu, which does eventually lead to her leaving the cave and she's captivated by the reflection in the mirror that is hers and the beauty of the jewel itself. The gods who help her restrain Amaterasu when she leaves the cave are Ameno Koyane no Mikoto and Ameno Kudodama no Mikoto. The first is a god who guards the divine mirror of Amaterasu and the divination ritual which has six different functions. To establish the will of God, ask for information from God, animate living things or drain their energy, kill enemies, predict outcomes, and manipulate the weather. Now parts of this should stand out because Ada is someone who is obsessed with love but also vanity. One of the first things we see her do is looking into a mirror she brushes her teeth and in Konoha she's trying on clothes, things that are tied to appearances. Some of the divine functions are tied to gods and we have Shinjutsu and Boruto which are the powers of the Otsuski god Shiba Otsuski. So taking out asking God for information, carrying out God's will, or asking God to kill enemies, we have to look at the other things to stand out here. The predicting the outcomes of events can basically be traced back to the Sharingan Aya Insight and its precognitive powers to predict movements and predict the hand seals someone's going to weave. So we can take that off the table here, which leaves us with two powers. The first power is the power to drain or animate living beings. That stands out. That will be a very overpowered Mangekyo ability, one that is just as unblockable as the Kamui. The, the power to drain life from living objects in the world of Naruto would basically be the power to drain Chakra, only this would be via the dojutsu itself. We've seen this before with the Prada Path, but this would be something done purely using a dojutsu that does not require touch. Only something like sight, like Kamui, is something that can truly turn the tables in battle. The ability to manipulate weather is also another interesting theme, because the weakness of Karma is that it cannot absorb chakra-based attacks that start out as natural resources, i.e. fire release that uses real fire that naturally exists, or water release that uses water that already exists that was infused with chakra, or lightning release that is already imbued with natural existing lightning. If Sarda is able to naturally create storms that produce lightning or wind storms to add to her attacks, Kawaki cannot absorb those attacks. The same way causing the area to heat up high enough to start fires, which in turn can be amped up by her ninjutsu, which again cannot be absorbed by Karma. Now Kawaki could shrink it, but his Karma would be taken off the table. The deity also guarding the mirror of Amaterasu, the divine mirror that comes from Ameno Uzume, might also be a potential power because a mirror literally reflects. We just had Momoshiki say that the Shinjutsu cannot be reversed, but if Sardis Mangekyo's Sharingan is able to reflect something chakra related, it might undo the effects of Shinjutsu on those who are affected by it. I don't think that the Futodama portion will have anything to do with her power because that's a god associated with gifts and divination, but the Meino Koyane already covers the divination portion. I do believe Sardis' other power might come from one of these because 
discussed. Going back to the main no Uzume story, the result of Matsurasu being taken out of the cave was that light was restored to the world, and in Boruto, we have a Shinjutsu that affected the entire world. While light isn't gone, the memories of people worldwide are gone because they've been altered by Ada Shinjutsu. Something to do reflection to set things right on a case by case basis might be a path that this goes because of the mythology, but the divination linked to the deity who helped restrain Amaterasu just happens to have things that either counter karma and the ability to manipulate weather or have the basis for an overpowered ability that would give Otsuski huge problems, which is one of Sarda's goal, be able to fight Otsuski and the ability to absorb life force or chakra if we adjust it to the Naruto world, which also lines up with what we've seen with Kage's preparations when she wrote Momoshiki and Kenshiki down by name in the Boruto manga as the pair of invaders who she feared. The White Zetsu army, while it is weak, it does have the ability to drain chakra, just like that divination ability has. The anime had Sasuke confirm that Danzo almost recreated Kage's hidden jutsu, i.e. Nue, which just happens to have the power to absorb chakra, just like that divination power. I think based off of what we have here with these two stories, which just happen to link with Mangekyo's Sharingan powers that Sarda will have for certain in the form of Susano, which every Uchiha who awakens Mangekyo with both eyes in their body at some point are able to get access to, and Amaterasu, it makes sense that one of these might be her final Mangekyo's Sharingan power. However, I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this. Which do you think will be the more overpowered Mangekyo's Sharingan ability for Sarda, and what power do you think she'll have if you don't think it's one of these this one was pretty heavy on mythology but i told you guys when the spoilers came out i'd have to do a ton of research because there were two stories associated with susano and amaterasu that we haven't seen yet in the naruto franchise so i hope you guys enjoyed this one click here to watch my every mangekyo sharingan power explained video